Hello everyone, my name is James. Uh, thanks for coming all today to support open source Bitcoin. Um, I'd like to talk about what I worked on this summer. Uh, I worked on Taproot um, and a privacy toolkit for developers. So I'm based in Zurich. Um, I'm US born uh, to Taiwanese parents and I spend a good part of my life in, in Switzerland. And I first learned about Bitcoin when Mt. Gox was hacked in 2014. Back then none of my friends in Tokyo could tell me uh, what Bitcoin was. Um, that has changed quite a bit since then. We've come a long way. I learned Bitcoin by building a lot of mini projects to learn about uh, and what transactions are on testnet, um, what kind of P2P messages exist and how the protocol works, and uh, like basic payment channels. I learned all this stuff by building these little small projects. And these projects eventually grew into a full Bitcoin developer course. And that's what I teach today at 21 Lectures. I'm a co-trainer with Jonas Schnelli and Christian Decker. These are longtime core contributors. Um, and for those who can't come, I have an online class at teachbitcoin.io uh, where I teach part of the curriculum over a four-week period um, online. Uh, the people who come to this course are developers from exchanges, Bitcoin ATMs, Bitcoin wallet manufacturers, and it's pretty cool because these guys work with Bitcoin every day, but they mostly interact with Bitcoin via the RPC interface, right? And so to actually spend a couple of days uh, building on top of the protocol directly is, is pretty cool and, and very fun. So I enjoy that a lot. Um, I'm also a contributor to Libitcoin. Libitcoin is a C++ Bitcoin library, and it provides a lot of the low-level uh, libraries and modules for somebody to get smart about the Bitcoin protocol. Before Bitcoin, I worked at a couple of startups. Uh, I'm a co-founder of a photovoltaic simulation company. Um, I've also worked in data science. I started out my career at, at NASA at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. And I think there's some, some parallels in the experience that I had there with Bitcoin, namely, the, the design process is extremely rigorous. You have a lot of mission critical components and I see that happening in Bitcoin as well where you have a lot of people reviewing every little change uh, except that happens online and not in a, in a conference room. Okay, so why is Bitcoin important to me? Bitcoin is important to me because I believe or I, it became apparent to me that the, the importance of Bitcoin really is in its role as an alternative money, right? Not more, not less. And it can only be an alternative money if it remains censorship resistant as a technology, as an open source project. Um, it cannot work without privacy. If the actors in the system are not anonymous, uh, you know, they, can be, they can be attacked. So this is something that I believe is extremely important to the success of the Bitcoin project in the long term and something that I, I really wanted to work on. Unfortunately, Bitcoin is just sort of private today. It's not very private, right? Like there, the, the, the chain analysis tools, as you probably all know, have become very sophisticated. They have very strong heuristics to be able to determine Bitcoin ownership, uh, Bitcoin taint. And together with KYC, that kind of risks bifurcating the system into a white and black market uh, uh, parts. So that's not good. We do have some countermeasures like CoinJoin. CoinJoin is useful, but it's mm, relatively expensive and the anonymity set is not guaranteed. You don't really know who you're mixing with, obviously. There is some more advanced privacy, privacy tech. A lot of that's happening in cryptography, um, but a lot of that may be in research phase. It's very complex, so it will take a lot of time before it makes its, so, make its, its way to Bitcoin. Uh, we do have layering protocols like Lightning that, ha that have been pretty successful and have gained a lot of tra tra uh, uh, traction. But the thing with layering protocols is that they rely on contracting protocols, which when, once dropped on chain can be correlated and are visible to the public. So that's also something that we can improve. So this is where Schnorr and Taproot will make a big, big difference in terms of privacy. Uh, these are proposals, two proposals, together with TapScript 3 proposals, which were, which were um, written by Peter Willey uh, with the help of a lot of other contributors. And in terms of privacy, they bring two important things. Firstly, indistinguishable contracts. That means we have outputs which are locked by different spending conditions, but to the observer on chain, uh, they look like reg regular pub keys uh, they, and therefore indistinguishable. Taproot introduced the ability to hide complex uh, script structures into a pub key. So in that sense, they are hidden from the observer on chain. And these are both huge privacy wins for Bitcoin. But it is Bitcoin after all. So, you know, changes require consensus. So people, users will need to use them. Developers will need to support the upgrade. Um, and so, you know, it requires some kind of socialization in the community for Storm and Taproot to get, actually be activated. And I think what I wanted to work on this summer is to provide an accessible way for a developer to do that. And today we don't have easy to use toolkits for a developer to immediately build on top of Storm and Taproot. Uh, so that's, that's what I did. So this is my project. It's a developer toolkit built on top of Bitcoin Core. 
Specifically, it's a Taproot Ranch written by Peter Willey. Um, the Taproot uh, consensus is already implemented, but there is only a very thin Schnorr and Taproot uh, class layer in the in the original branch. So what I've done is expand it with um, modules like MuSig, Adapter Six, Discrete Law Contracts, um, and Taproot classes which allow the user to actually experience how, the, uh, to, uh, uh, give the user the tools to build very private protocols without having to read the paper, uh, build their own implementation, uh, you know, from scratch, from, from just Taproot and Schnorr. So to demonstrate what a developer can, can do with the library, um, I'd like to show some examples. So uh, the first examples are, are indistinguishable contracts. These are basically um, primitives which are powered by Schnorr. The first one is music. So today, a multi-sig uh, spend or an output, uh, that's very observable on-chain because there are multiple pub keys that are visible. Music allows us to aggregate these pub keys so that on-chain, a single pub key uh, is, 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 is only visible. Uh, same goes for signing. When, these, when this pub key is spent, uh, the signatures from the multiple parties can be aggregated and the, uh, only a single a signature is dropped uh, to chain. So from the on-chain observer, point of view, uh, this looks like a regular single spend um, transaction. So the anonymity set becomes much, much larger, even though it's actually a multi-signature contract. Another useful tool for privacy are atomic swaps. So atomic swaps are when two users swap coins without anybody else knowing, thereby obscuring the coin ownership. If we want to do that today, however, it requires a hash-based system or hash-based out outputs, which means that a a, a transaction requires a secret pre-image to, to be spent, and that pre-image then is used in the same trans in the second transaction, where the the, the funds are being exchanged, and because the pre-image needs to be dropped on chain in the witness, these two transactions can be correlated by any on-chain observer. So that's that's not good for privacy, obviously. With Schnorr and adapter signatures, we can do much better. So adapter signatures always are form signature pairs with regular signatures, and the correlating secret is hidden within. So you can see in the first transaction where A is saying to B, the signature together with the adapter signature releases a secret off-chain, and the second user can then use that secret to reconstruct the signature uh, he or she needs to c conduct the, the second transaction, thereby completing the swap. So we've swapped coin owners, and we've done it in a way where these two transactions are completely uncorrelatable on chain. So that's great from a privacy point of view. Schnorr also enables new features, new contracting features, which weren't possible before. So in this case, we want to have different contracts or puppies execute only if an off-chain oracle creates uh, uh, the, the corresponding signature. So say oracle signs the event A. That signature allows signature one to be created, which spends pub key one, but not for pub key two and not for pub key three. If the oracle signs for event B, the second pub key can, can execute. If oracle signs for C, the third. So this allows us to bring trusted off-chain information onto on-chain uh, script execution, again, in a way which is unobservable by the on-chain observer. They just look like regular single spend uh, transactions. So. The second part of the toolkit is around Taproot. Taproot means we can hide Bitcoin script in a very nice way. So let's first consider how Bitcoin scripts work today. This is, uh, as you may recognize, an HLC. Um, HLCs are used to forward payments in Lightning, and an HLC needs to encapsulate quite a bit of you know, uh, spending logic. The first one is the success case. So the forwarding payment has been successfully delivered, um, this is the part of the execution uh, of the script that is actually executed, highlighted in orange. The forwarding, uh, the forwarding attempt can also fail. It can time out and needs to be reversed. And that's the case where, where this part of the script is being uh, executed. And finally, the state of the channel can be updated where the HLCs must be revoked. And that executes, uh, again, another part of the script. So every time these scripts are actually dropped on chain, the entire contract is revealed revealing quite a bit of information which can be correlated to de-anonymize users of the Lightning Network. So we can do better. Uh, with a type Taproot toolkit, uh, the user now doesn't need to worry about Bitcoin script. It simplifies things quite a bit. The user only needs to worry about the different spending conditions. The first one being success, then a pub key and a hash. The second one being a timeout, pub key and a time. And the third one being revocation, where we just need a revocation key. The different spending paths are only revealed if that 
uh, scenario occurs. So you can see in the timeout scenario, it's this branch. In the revocation scenario, it's this branch. And only a proof of that branch needs to be broadcast as on-chain. Um, and everything else remains secret and private. So the goal here is to, to provide the, the developer with you know, a basic higher level language. We introduce tab script descriptors um, so that they don't have to worry about Bitcoin script and can actually just implement the kind of contracting logic that they want uh, together with um, a utilities like the tree solver, which generate the tree structure for more complex taproot outputs. So you can see the privacy design space has really been opened up quite a bit with, with Schnorr and Taproot, and that's, that's really a huge win. Um, however, this stuff takes time. Uh, I think if there's something that we learned with SegWit is that the socialization of a new soft fork uh, is, is really something that needs uh, engagement of the community. Um, and in the meantime, Taproot itself takes time before it's actually integrated into Bitcoin Core fully. In the meantime, in, in this period of time, uh, you know, developers need uh, tools which allow them to easily and accessibly start using the power of Schnorr and Taproot to build protocols and applications, prototypes. And uh, uh, Optech has been a great supporter of this project this summer. Uh, we will be using this library to deliver two uh, workshops in the coming weeks where we teach Taproot and Schnorr to the developers in the Bitcoin industry. For myself, I, I really look forward to being part of this process to bring Taproot and Schnorr uh, to activation. Um, one of the things that I really want to look on and contribute to as well is implementing uh, this technology into other parts of Bitcoin Core, like the Walt, which will eventually serve as a reference client implementation for the wider community, uh, hopefully with your support as well. Thank you so much.